Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Hi again, curling fans, and hello to you, Colleen. It's felt like a lifetime since it's, we last talked. Well, it's been many time zones for you. I mean, where have you been? How many kilometers have you traveled in the last two weeks? It's a little much. I'm exhausted. It's uh, morning, Friday morning in Japan. That's uh, where I am currently. But I'm here with you, and I'm here with all the great curling fans. Um, and, call the last time we chatted, you were in my home province in Saskatchewan, of course, at the Mixed Nationals. And, yeah. and some quick they, thoughts on that. Right now, all the best curlers are there for, I don't know the name of the spiel, but, I mean, it's uh, once again a who's who of – um, talent there in Swift Current, so amazing. What a facility they have there. Yeah. And what work they did to strengthen that club and keep that club alive. Um, and now it's just, you know, very vibrant. Um, it's amazing how many, you know, towns and, and cities have lost curling clubs over the last couple of years. So anyhow, they've got the they've got quite an elite field there right now. Terrazoni's there, for example, and and Nicodine. Nick and Dean, I mean, he's on your schedule. Well, I mean, that, you know, we obviously have Mike Harris and Joanne Courtney joining us at the end of the show for the hot stove to get into a bunch of things. But yes, Nick and Dean and his team, of course, was with me in Karazawa for the International Curling Classic there. They're exhausted. They're burnt out calls. So they, we were delayed seven hours coming back from Japan. They miss their connections. Mm -hmm. They're scrambling to get to Saskatchewan. And and Nick's body is is pieced together and he's injured and Rasmus couldn't play in their bronze medal game because yeah. his body was banged up. This is a grind. It is a grind. And not just for the elite players. I mean, uh, the, the traveling through the winter has always been a problem for mm. anybody who's sort of on that next circuit trying to get into slams. Right. Uh, when you get one cancellation... I know for uh, my women's team going to the two cells in Ontario, it was planes, trains, and automobiles just to get to Brampton, Ontario. Ditto for Luke going to Morris, Saskatchewan. Right. Where fly backwards to St. John's, then through several time zones, wait, no sleep, play two games. Bam. Bam. So we got a jam-packed show. Uh, we got a pinch hitter, not a bad one. Uh, from one Howard to the other, uh, Glenn can't join us, so it's going to be Scott Howard. We'll get to that. Uh, we have Coach Ryan Fry. I told you Mike Harris and Joanne Courtney to close out the show. Uh, but, call. we have some exciting news here on the show, an exclusive reveal of the Canadian wheelchair curling team for the World Championships, which is so fantastic. You and I have talked a lot about it on the show. We've had curlers from the wheelchair team on the show. Uh, they care deeply, and it's been a successful program for so long. I wanted to let them know just how we were going to get into it. So there we go. And so we are going to run a hype video to introduce the team call. And then we spoke to a couple of the team members earlier because right now they are in Leduc, Alberta in a mixed, mixed doubles up. wheelchair curling event there and some fun stuff going on because they're usually teammates who are competing there. Um, <laughs> back and forth so we had some fun with that but but a, a, a program that for years really has been so competitive call well yeah and it's growing all the time uh and how they've been performing at both the paralympics and the world championships has been amazing um the growth of wheelchair uh curling is sort of a in, in some areas of the country still at a grassroots level right same people coming out putting in the time Getting cl clubs that are wheelchair accessible, of course, is uh, really important and growing the sport more. Right now, the elite players that we've been watching, for example, especially at last year's Worlds and again at the Paralympics, um, their precision is, is so good. Uh, and it's done without sweeping. Uh, how many of our shots are just made? Right. Uh, with with the help of a sweeper if not for a sweeper you'd have racked on a guard or missed the draw and so on i mean they just have to be perfect right from release so it's incredible to watch and it's great to see the growth and i would love to watch mixed doubles curling because we know how fast that game is when we're watching um mixed doubles over the last couple of years to do this without sweeping yeah. in 
precise shots. It just it just ramps up the difficulty all the more. Right. And you said it, you know, such a, a rich tradition, a lot of the same faces uh, a lot of the years. Right. Uh, the the Mark Idison's uh, Ina Force. I think Ina has competed in four Paralympics. She's still out there. So uh, we're getting set for the big unveiling of the team here. And like I said, they're in Leduc. And then, of course, this will all lead to the world championships, which take place called, by the way, um, in the same venue, the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics were where you and I were on the media bench, really getting to know each other and, and dissecting, <laughs> dissecting every game as we watch there. So they'll be in that venue. And there's there were a lot of great memories there. Of gorgeous, course. gorgeous, especially where we would go get tea and coffee hunts. That was, <laughs> you know, that actually, was this is such an aside. This show's yeah. not going to be 30 minutes, but uh, I didn't even get to tell you this. But when I was in Japan, I went to the tea house uh, that uh, John Le Lennon and Yoko Ono would go to. Oh, and it reminded very much uh, of the tea house that we would visit. Oh, beautiful. In beautiful. beautiful. Did you discover anything when you were in Japan about the growth of curling in Japan and in well, Asia? I mean, this is a hot spot, right? And and there's a lot of conversations going about, you know, we got to get a slam over here. That's what organizers were talking about. I mean, the fandom is crazy, right? Uh, Caitlin Laws, Jennifer Jones, Brad Gushu, their teams, they were all there. There were sec security guards in the facility trying to get the players out because of the fandom. It was so wonderful um, in a nice way, right? Just helping the players make their way through. But I think we're ready, Call. Without further ado, we're going to unveil this uh, this Canadian wheelchair curling team for the World Championships, an awesome hype video. So let's watch that and get into the conversation with uh, Kalinda Joseph and John Thurston. Enjoy. This is my time. I'm on the rise. Can't hold me down. I'm too blind. This is my time. Ready to shine. Brighter than all of the lights. Cause when it's game time. And how's that for a hype video? I'm ready to go, and I know these two are ready to go. John awesome. Thurston, Kalinda Joseph, uh, congratulations. Wonderful yeah. to see you. Um, John, you're no stranger to wearing the Maple Leaf, but just tell me about what it's like to, to be named to the team once again and tell uh, Colin and I about the team. Yeah, thanks, Devin. Thanks, Colleen. Uh, yeah, super excited. I mean, it's uh, it's an honor to wear the Maple Leaf and certainly excited to, to go to Korea and uh, – and compete against the best in the world. Um, yeah, super excited. We have a great team. Uh, the the four of us again with uh, with Mark, Gill, uh, Ina, and myself. And then we have uh, Chrissy Molner, who's uh, a next gen athlete, who's who's been uh, you know she's just a natural, has great feel. So it's going to be a exciting journey for her, first time representing Canada. Um, nice. But excited to, to get back in the ice. I thought we had a really good World Championships last year. Um, you know, had a battle with China in the final. Um, fortunately, uh, came up with the silver, but we're certainly uh, looking forward to performing really well, uh, uh, finishing strong in round robin, and then uh, and going for that gold. And, and we should mention, we're talking to you from Leduc Curling Club. Kalinda, does this ever get old for you? I'm guessing not. Still exciting. No. No, not at all. And the fact that we're uh, competing in a new discipline for wheelchair curling is something that is uh, is really exciting. And we're at the the ground level of it, and there's so much more to learn. And uh, Dan and I have been working really hard at at getting better and learning more about this discipline. And and uh, and we have uh, we have a lot to prove actually because. We came away with the bronze last year and, and felt like we were amazing, like super excited about a bronze medal and very happy to win one, but felt like um, 
we've got a lot to prove and we really want to go out there and win the gold medal. So we're excited to be able to have the opportunity again. Uh, John, Colleen just mentioned it a second ago. You are in Leduc uh, and you're playing mixed doubles. Of course, Kalinda and Dennis are the masters, but I understand the two of you squared off uh, yesterday. How did that end up going? <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was a battle. It was uh, it was uh, it was it was a good game. I mean, it's mixed doubles. It's it's a such a different discipline than than mixed. It's a roller coaster of yeah. a ride. Like, but yeah. uh, we'd battle to the end and uh, came down to the last rocks. But Clinda and Dennis uh, got the better of us. But looking forward to seeing them in uh, in playoffs. Awesome. Yeah. How did, how did the training camp in Europe go and how did that help everything? Uh, Kalinda, I'm assuming you were there as well. Yes. Yeah, we played uh, We played on a four-person team. Actually, Don and I played together as on the four-person team and, and we did really well there. We finished with a silver medal and, and, uh, and it was a great event. There were some really good teams there from the U.S. and Canada and uh, some British teams, of course. And then we went on to the mixed doubles event. Dennis and I played in the mixed doubles event and uh, and we ended up winning that event. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed the event. And that 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 facility in Sterling is quite something. It's uh, the peak center is amazing. And the, the curling rink and the training center is all uh, accessible. And it was fantastic. It was a really good event. Uh, John, this program has such a rich tradition. I don't have to tell you that. Uh, many, many medals to this uh, wheelchair program's name. Um, <clears throat> in terms of where we're currently at, where this program's at, as you look forward to another world championship, what needs to be worked on? How much better can this team get? Uh, you mentioned the battle with China. It always seems we're in a battle yeah. with China, but where where does this need to go from here and, and what role can you play in, in raising the level uh, of curling? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, we've, we've been in this pursuit um, of just continuing to get better, finding those 1%. And I, I think uh, we learned a lot from the, the 23 uh, world championships in Richmond and, and especially getting to play China. Um, so I, I think we've, uh, I think we're continuing to, we found some, some areas where you just got to continue to get better at, uh, at everything, you know, like the, the, the weight control on demand and um, line of delivery. Um, I think, and, and then I, I think we're, we're getting better at read nice and, and that. And I think in all those areas, we'll just continue to, to, you know, do our process to get better at, at all those areas. And I think we we'll keep looking for those 1% and we'll just mm. continue to get better. I think, I think we have a lot of, uh, you know, there's, there's still a, there's still a big ceiling up there. I think we can still get better. And, and I think the whole level is, I mean, all the worlds are, are getting better. I think it was some of the highest play I've seen uh, in the last two years between the, the Paralympics and the 23 world championships. It's, it's some of the highest uh, wheelchair curling uh, level of play that I've seen. So, uh, you know, we can assume that the other countries are, are, are working just as hard to get better. So we have to do, uh, we have to, we have to stay hard at it and, uh, and just keep getting better. Awesome. awesome. You know, you mentioned the three things, didn't you? Line of delivery, right weight, reading the ice. Like <laughs> that's always sometimes a mystery, right? But it is how you keep getting that 1% better. Listen, I know we gotta let you go, but, John, you did promise Devin and I a water skiing lesson and we didn't get it. I mean, we were looking for the, we were checking our voicemails. It never came. We were yes. checking to be on the yeah, list. Yeah, <laughs> Next to year. For that one, Colleen, but uh, Next you hold year. me to this one. We're, we're going to get you out in 24. Yeah. Okay. So that's I'll a promise. You heard it here. And, yeah, and, I, and, I, and I let, it. let me just say uh, before we let you go and you you all get back at it. Wonderful to see people like Lisa Weagle, uh, Dana Ferguson, I believe, is part of the coaching staff as well. Some some great curlers. The support group around this uh, Kalinda is pretty incredible as well, which is wonderful to see. Absolutely. She's uh, she's incredible. Um, I love working with Dana and she's caught on to the wheelchair mixed doubles game really, really well, but she's one of the best coaches I've ever worked with. And we are so lucky to have her. Nice. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we are really hey, lucky. To 
Kalinda, are the rules the same in mixed doubles for wheelchair as what we're used to seeing or you, Absolutely. Is, okay. Yeah, exactly the same. Um, no brushing, obviously. So we got to be that mm -hmm. much better. Mm -hmm. You know, of line of delivery and weight control is really important. And uh, yeah, it's exactly the same. Okay. Awesome. All right. Okay, Team Canada. Uh, wonderful. To, congratulations. Uh, yeah, congrats. Thank you. Thanks, Colleen. Thank you, Devin. We'll be following the much. journey. Uh, get back at it. We'll be following uh, the journey in Leduc and see if you two square off a game. That's outstanding. <laughs> but congratulations. And send uh, Colleen and I as well. Wishes to everybody there competing. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks, Devin. Thanks, Colleen. Thank you. So there you have it, call Team Canada. They're ready to go. Uh, and I know they're very focused on, as, as you said, getting better that that 1%, right? Right. And a footnote, if John ever does call us for that water skiing trick lesson, I'm not going to answer the phone because I couldn't do what he's doing. Like, that would be no. terrible. Is it just me? I'm glad we didn't get the call. I wasn't ready for it. I'm going. And if I'm going, you're going. I'm ready. I'm ready. That, But it's trick skiing. Like, it's not just... We not I will have a look at them. We'll be fine. Uh, outstanding. There you have it. Uh, team Canada, the wheelchair curling teams headed to the world championships in South Korea in March. And of course, we'll be watching and, and cheering from afar. So uh, outstanding to have that unveiled. And now we're going to go to someone making their debut on the show call. It's it's felt like it's been building. We've had Glenn on before, but now finally we get to chat with Scott Howard into that curling show. Scott, on late notice, thanks for joining us. No, thanks for having me. I um, mean, funny you say that. I was, uh, I was sitting backstage there thinking to myself, if you asked me a week ago if I was going to be on the curling show, I'd, I'd kind of laugh and say, what for? But uh, all jokes aside, no, thanks for having me, guys. Winning Pentic Penticton, first off, with three players, you guys were amazing. What was the mindset? Because you guys have kind of been sleepers so far this season and then bam pound a botcher like he's not number two in the world and then winning the championship against um john schuster skipped by chris Plyce. it was a, it was a team two teams without their traditional skips but what what yeah, was uh, yeah I'm, I'm like you said i'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it we uh we had a rough a rough start to the year um dad was uh was struggling with some knee injuries and uh yeah, it just, uh, we wanted to regroup. We we went out to the Sioux there. Um, Ryan Harden put on a great event and we ended up losing the semifinals to Italy. And then we followed it up with another semifinal loss in uh, in Collingwood. So um, those are the two events where my dad came back as skip and we were building a lot of momentum. But when the, was, the season starts, we want to put that new new Floors Penticton uh, Classic highlighted on our schedule. And that's been, uh, it's been our number one goal and it's been our favorite event uh, for the last past years. We've had a lot of success there. So yeah, we were very excited uh, um, to get out there. And once we started going, we, we had a great round Robin. We were three and one, things were going well. And then um, I believe it was Sunday morning. My dad woke up and said, boys, we have a problem here. I can't walk. I can't move. My knee is swollen. Wow. And we just said to each other, well, um, there's a couple options. Um, we know how po uh, points are so important to everybody in the season. So uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, whatever we do, that the points weren't going to be effective in affected in any way. So we decided to go with the three-man roster, and, um, and lo and behold, it worked out. Um, yeah, it was great. It was one of those things where um, we all had to step up in our roles to to, mm -hmm. to get that success. Um, it's not the the plan that we wanted to have my dad out, or uh, we'd, we'd like to go with three, but we think it was the best uh, best possible si situation at the time. And yeah, and like I said, it's it made us to the got us to the final, and we we played well and ended up getting the championship. Well, there, there's certainly something, Scott, to this whole idea of having to sort of meet the moment, right, where you can't really prepare for something like that. And then it's right in your face and you just sort of rise up. And it, it seems to have brought the best out in all of you, which is pretty spectacular. Yeah, exactly. Um, and another cool thing is uh, Brad Jacobs actually reached out to my dad and said um, he saw how fired up we were um, with the three of us and, and all the intensity we brought, the focus. And, and he thinks that's how we won uh, last weekend. It's one of those things you, you hear those top athletes um, saying that they peak when they're in their uh, there's in the zone. It, it's one of those words that you're in the zone. And, mm -hmm. and as soon as I got to skip, I had one job to do to play well, um, support the guys. And the guys were playing so well in front of me, made me had so many easy shots. And it was, it was one of those weekends where things were going right. We got a lot of breaks, but 
I was in the zone. I think the other guys were in the zone and, and it was one of those things where we had so much confidence. And uh, like I said, this, the year was, was a tough year. And one of those things that we had to step up and, and bring our A game and yeah, lo and behold, we're, we're in the final and we end up uh, beating Chris Blyes. It was, it was awesome. Awesome weekend. And, and I was watching all your games, but tell me about Botcher because he's been a tough team for anybody to beat. And you guys, what shook hands was it after five ends or six i can't remember i watched yeah them. man those those four <laughs> guys are incredible curlers holy but um one of those things like i said earlier colin like the breaks were going our way we had a lot of breaks in the cooey's game we had a lot of breaks in the botcher game and and when it comes to those games you have to capitalize so um i made a couple key shots in uh, the the cooey game and i made a couple key shots in the in the botcher game to to get the the two ender and then uh, the shot for three, and then we had a, a nice open hit for five. So you, you got to make those shots if you want to play at that level. And um, like I said, things were going right, and the boys were playing amazing. So uh, it was just one of those things that went so well. Yeah, when you say an open hit for five against Botcher, you're going, that's impossible. You dreamt it. Listen, how was the old man doing? Uh, okay. Um, so we flew home. So we, we won the final. Uh said thanks to all the, uh, the event, event coordinators. And then we literally jumped in the truck, ra race, race to the airport, got on the flight. And then as soon as we got off the flight, I think we landed at 1223 the next morning. His mm -hmm. knee was so big, swollen. Um, <laughs> we, we talked about maybe getting a wheelchair to get him back to the truck because he couldn't barely walk. And he was struggling, but um, yeah, it's one of those things we're just gonna have to take day by day. Uh, the best part is that win was so massive for us. It, uh, it unofficially, we might have a, a provincial spot. and um and we got some time off here so uh like i said we had a, a a tough year to start the year but uh this big win it gives us lots of confidence going to the provincial final and or sorry not sorry the provincials um but uh yeah no we're just going to build on this and keep for the momentum going uh, scott i don't have to tell you this how much your dad means to canadian curling fans from coast to coast to coast i can't imagine what it would be like uh for you to be in there, skipping, being in the zone, playing as well as you did, and and win this title. Maybe just try and find some words to to reflect what that moment means for you and your dad. It's awesome. Like I said, I, well, I wish I could have played the final with him and, and the whole weekend. But one of those things you got to step up. And I've talked to a couple people because um, I want to figure out how to bottle that in the zone sort of moment. Because if I can uh, ever figure out a way to uh, yeah keep that momentum going and. And that performance because uh, i would love to play like that every single day every single weekend so look really looking forward to it um as far as dad I, i'm really hoping that um uh, things are going to get better we we think we're at, we're the best team when we have all four guys shooting so um like i said we got some time off so things are uh, hopefully going to be better for dad in the next month or so and get some rehab and get that knee back in shape where we need it did you uh pay for a massage for poor tim <laughs> Oh, did you see that? He was a machine. So um, uh, it was funny. So we, we had some chats after the games and um, I said, Tim, like, are you good? Like, uh, can you hold out for a couple more? Like, and he's like, Scott, I'll do whatever it takes to win. I've got tons of games in me. I can play as much as you want, sweep as hard as you want and, um, and keep going. That guy is a machine. So um, he's done lots for our team and, and the game. And um, back to the massage, he, uh, I'm sure he's got a couple massages over the last couple of days, but um yeah he needs some rest for sure and thank god we're not curling for a couple weeks awesome so what a great what a great story not not great on the part of of uh glenn uh down and out but obviously uh, the curling world is sending all good vibes his way scott um, but it's just a, a beautiful story of how you all rallied around him and rallied for each other and found a way to win but scott yeah i appreciate it a little bit about just the exhaustion of getting home from the the trip we're going to talk to uh, Mike and Joanne a little later on, just about burnout in general, because you guys have had a lot of hard seasons. In the, but how do you manage it? Are there times you're like, I just don't even want to look at a curling club, you know, for a couple of days? How do you handle Yeah, that? exactly. Um, and for our team, we, we've kind of fell down the rankings quite a bit. Unfortunately, um, we've got full-time jobs. Um, we've had quite a few kids over the last couple of years. And um, we've been kind of tailoring our tailoring our, sis, our season towards that provincials. We want to get back to that Briar and BT Ontario. And um, yeah, like I it said, it's, 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 it's tough for us. We'd love to be in that, that top, call it 15 in, in the world, but we're, we're pretty far away from that right now. So we're just taking it uh, day by day, event by event, and uh, just focusing on what our goals are now. So um, hopefully we can uh, do what we are end goal is and, and get back to the briar and make do some damage there so 
Well, bottle the way you played. And I always say once that's out of the bottle, you know, you've you've captured, you've got the magic. Mm. You showed what you could do. And all the, the, your playoff games were just so well played, so well called, mm. so well managed with three. Uh, it was awesome to watch. So you did it once, you can just keep repeating it. Exactly. And I got to give my dad a lot of props. The, the, the game that he calls is kind of the game I want to tailor myself. And it just gives us lots of opportunities and chances. Yeah, I pretty, pretty good recipe there, Scott. Pretty good oh. recipe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. uh, listen, all all our best to you and to, and to Glenn and the team, and and so grateful for for you to join us uh, last minute in place of your dad. But uh, obviously, you're no stranger to stepping in and having success, and you've done it on the show. So mm -hmm. thank you for doing this, Scott. Yeah, thanks well, again for having me, guys. Awesome. Get Scott. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> That was good. Um, and, you know, and again, call, you know, all our best to, to go. Yeah, these curlers are sort of pretty epic. And I know I'm dealing with my own meniscus woes now. And because you're always, you're, you're, you're not just at a normal angle, you're hyperextended, right? Yeah. And uh, as soon as you get a feel for that meniscus talking to you, it terrifies you. Because in some cases, it's career ending. Uh, Glenn has had surgery on it before. How many times, how many surgeries do you have to get in order to well, keep I, I, I'm thinking about the time when he was skidooing. What happened there? Oh, the, well, he's just bolted back together, Superman. That's what they did with Glenn Howard. So, yeah, um, I... um, and uh, to hear that, the, you know, the swelling caused by the plane probably and then hobbling off, it's, it's, it's not easy. Not so, easy. Speed, as speedy as the meniscus can be, yeah. uh, recovery and hopefully no surgery. No kidding. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, no stranger to the curling game, of course, call here. And now we're getting used to calling him Coach Ryan Fry. And what a story this has turned out to be. I mean, Italian curling is as good as it gets on another planet. And of course, Team Returnas is having one of the more memorable seasons, aren't they, at the at okay. the top of the world right now? We never thought you'd hear that sentence, Italian curling, as I, you know, <laughs> because it's it's still small but mighty, but man, it, not just what Returnas is doing, but Constantini. I mean, well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. When the Olympics roll along, having been in Torino, however many years ago that was, um, to, the crowd was excited already because they could feel that kind of feeling like they could understand it like bocce. Right. But now to have two teams that could contend for gold medals for Italy at their own Olympics, the atmosphere in that rank will be like it was in Vancouver when yep. Martin won and uh, Cheryl Bernard won her silver. There he is, Mr. Fry. Mr. Fry. Hello, you two are looking lovely as always. Oh, you can, you can come back anytime, Ryan. You as well. It's wonderful to see you. And what a story this is. We're good. I want to start there because we're going to get to the coaching and why they're good and all of that. But just from your perspective, what a story. Like, yeah. this is incredible the way these guys are playing. Yeah, the, the story goes far deeper than the way they're playing too. Um, you know, the once once the story comes out about this team and you know the fact that they've all are from the same region in Italy, um, you know, Joel started curling and you know, he was in the Olympics in two thousand six and he basically, you know, just took his lumps and got the crap kicked out of him for so many years and just steadfast and kept going and moving forward and, and, um, you know, helping develop the program and then waiting for, you know, players to develop to catch up to, you know, as he was growing to catch up to him and, and for them all to be from the same area and, and be able to train together. And, and it, it's just such a cool story, um, you know, and, and I've said it on, you know, multiple interviews. It's just the work ethic that these guys put in is is just, um, you know, it's world leading. And it's it's something that's so cool to be a part of. Well, tell us about that world, world leading. How is it different than what you were used to? Which, can I call it in your heyday? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. No, it's a, it, you know, it's, it's, there's, it's, there's a lot of similarities, um, you know, between, uh, the team that I was a part of with Team Jacobs with Ryan and EJ um, and Brad and 
and this team. This team is, you know, very much a brotherhood. They they are one for all, all for one. They're just very dedicated to one another and getting better and putting the work in necessary to get to that level. So um, I'm seeing a lot of similarities. So for me, I, I, I said in an interview with Bob Weeks as well, is it's it's for me, it's a second chance to kind of right a lot of the wrongs that were done within the team. So when you when you get to that level and you and you reach the level of an Olympic gold medal, um, you know, a lot of things come along with that. And, you know, we definitely put our energy in some places that it didn't need it to be put into. And, and you start seeing that if you would really have, um, you know, focused that energy correctly, how far you could have gone and how much you could assist, how long you could have sustained being, um, you know, one of those top teams. And I think that this team is very much prepared to do everything necessary to, you know, not only make themselves proud, but make an entire country proud. So yeah. to be on, to be on a, to be on a team like that again is, is just, it's, you know, it's twice in a lifetime. Awesome. Well, I can hear in your voice, there's an energy rhyme, which is so beautiful to see. And, um, I'm fascinated once again of you saying all from the same region and working together because we've had so many conversations on this show about chemistry. Um, and in a lot of other sports, we talk about team cohesion and chemistry more than we do in curling. But once again, you're proving a, a, a winning example, a successful example of how important it is to be training and, and a brotherhood. Absolutely. You immerse yourself in it. When, um, you know, when I moved to Sault Ste. Marie, it was to immerse myself in it. Um, mm. Same, same thing applies with this team. Um, you know, when they, when they travel, they're, they're jumping on a train to Milano or Venice and, and flying across the, the ocean together and, and, you know, landing in Canada. And it very much feels, you know, their country, their team against, you know, everyone else. And it's, it creates that um, bond that, you know, you understand that when, you know, things go wrong, you have to be there to support with one another. And when things are at their highest, you're there to enjoy it with one another. And cool. that's what makes cooling so curling so cool is it's a, it's a team sport, but it's a very small team sport. And when you put a team together that um, really enjoys being around one another, there's nothing greater. And um, like I said, like having that, you know, a couple of times now in my career is it's just, it's one of the best things you can get in curling. And I wish it for everybody, to be honest right. with you. How, how did this opportunity come about for you? I mean, we know you were with Rachel's uh, team and then suddenly to get a call from Italy. Um, how did that, how did that come about? And do you need yeah, an assistant? Because I'm, I'm... <laughs> uh, you, you never know. Um, and and if, if I do, you'll be the first to, the first I make to a call, obviously call, but um, Devin, you're number two. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm all right with that. <laughs> um, it, it actually came about in um, at the Champions Cup. Uh, we were in the Champions Cup and I had a conversation with Joelle just over breakfast and um, nothing really, no, no real um, merit to any of it. And But we did open the lines to maybe having a conversation. And then once we did decide to have that conversation, it became abundantly clear that we were very much aligned in, in the way we saw the game and the way we wanted to see it move forward and what we could do for one another. And um, that conversation went really well. And then the conversation went, well with the the rest of the team and then um i had to speak with uh claudio pesha who is um uh, you know the director of, of curling for for the federation um and a lot of pieces had to come into place for for this to happen and um you know i'm just i'm extremely fortunate that they all did yeah uh we're we're, we're seeing in the chat here i don't know if joe and courtney wants me saying this but she's uh number three in line she says to to join the crew so you have an entourage ryan of help yeah. if you need it um listen curling is in the spotlight uh in this country all the time what's your sense of what what these teams are doing how much it's capturing the attention of italians and as Cole just said this might be the marquee ticket to the to the olympics and and sort of can you give us some context on all of that i i i, I can't uh, i um <laughs> i think that i think that the sport is is in a very good position internationally i think the sport is moving in moving in the right direction i think there's a lot of interest um out of asia out of out of a lot of the european countries um we're getting to a point where these where these teams are just they're working 
their absolute hardest. And um, that's what this, these teams are focused on, both Stefania and, and Joel, both those teams. They're, they, they understand um, the opportunity that's in front of them and um, they're not letting you know, it pass. So they are working extremely hard on and off the ice and um, you're starting to see the results. Um, it's not going to be, you know, a steady climb to the top. I, I think there'll be some hiccups along the way. But um, mm. when you have two teams that are, you know, prepared to do everything possible to to get to their absolute best and peak for, you know, some of the major events being the Worlds and, and the Olympics, um, I think they're in a spot where this could be, you know, this could be the making of a, of a very cool fairy tale story. And, um, you know, I... I there's nothing better than being part of a fairy tale story. So um, they are let's, see, let's see what happens. Yeah, they're number one in the rankings. So the climb this year has just been so great. Listen, you were used to, of course, some pretty great sweepers on your team, especially the Harnham boys. But the sweepers on this team, or do they just even blow your mind? Or do you go whoa like that? Like they do. Yeah, it is. It is one of those moments in curling that is that is game changing, and it's you're starting to see it and. I think a lot of the teams are starting to see it, um, that the strength and the downward force that, you know, these two, these three sweepers can apply to, to a brush is, is making it, um, making it so our tolerance for shot making, um, increases. So we just have, we just have a big tolerance. That being said, um, on any given day, we can, we can miss call. Um, the use of our sweepers. Uh, and if that happens, then you can, you can miss shots just as easily, um, you know, having, having good sweeping. So line calling um, is just as important as having the ability to um, sweep as effectively as, as the three of them do. It's just, it's just right now, um, if we can figure that out and we can, we can manage that correctly, um, it gives us a tolerance that um, is above and beyond what any of the teams have at this point in time. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, you'll be headed to my hometown of Saskatoon, I would I yeah. would assume, and looking to make it what three slam wins, which yeah, is it's it's yeah, that's it's super cool. There, that like I said, the the team is the team is putting in the work. So you know we're going to these events, and it's you know we're just really trying to stick to a program and stick to um you know the blueprint that we're putting that we're kind of building out and. Um, you know, the luck, the, the breaks kind of went our way and we, we were able to, um, win a couple of slams, but, you know, by no means does that, uh, does that leave room to let up whatsoever because you have teams like Brendan and, and Dunstone and, and Schwaller and Moet, all, all these amazing teams that are, you know, equally working, um, very hard. So they're, they're prepared to do what's necessary to, to stake their claim at number one. And I'm sure that, you know, over the time that, that number one ranking will switch hands a few times, but the most important thing is that, you know, we're putting in that work and at the end of it, we're, we're prepared to do that. So we'll see. Hard work. That's it. Work, yeah. work, work, work. Yeah. <laughs> Sing it, man. That's All it. right. You know who your assistants are and then number three, Joanne Courtney, but you know. Yeah. hundred percent. No, it's uh, it's awesome. And, you know, from 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 an ex curler um, and now a coach. Thank you both for doing everything you do. This is such a cool medium for our sport, and um, you know, having a having a marketing agency within the sport, it's it's super cool that um, you know there's there's people like you that are really trying to you know get behind the sport and push it forward. So um, on behalf of me, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. And you're never an ex curler. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Gravestone. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. you as well. You and as well. Take care. This looks great on you and, and happy to see you happy. So well done. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Devin. All the best to you both. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, love the rise of Italy because these, for a lot of, for, for Italy, it's a small curling nation and they have played in obscurity for a long time. Remember when we interviewed um, Madeleine Dupont after she won the Europeans and she was just over the moon with it. Yeah last year and i remember you asking her you know what's what's it like there in your in denmark are people talking about it no no one's talking about it and she really did such a good profession of her love almost of the game yeah. that's not why she plays she's all been used to playing in a country where no one pays a lot of attention right to her. hopefully that just as you what you saw in japan where they're walking out with security right that's a lovely uh picture to yeah. build um, so anyhow, that's that's a lovely opportunity for Ryan.
Um, I, I love that, you know, he's got the number one team, Pierre Charette on the women's side uh, with uh, Terrazoni's team. Uh, two wonderful Canadian curlers who have done a lot for the sport. Um, and I think in some, a lot of people wouldn't have seen those coaching choices and yet the right. coaching choices. And, and you know what I love, Call, out of all of that? And, and Ryan, what a, what a thoughtful interview is mm -hmm. just hearing him be very specific about those, those little things that those great teams do. Mm -hmm. And I think you can only, in a lot of cases, have that after you've been in the trenches. Yeah, you know, you gotta, well, no, there's no such thing as an overnight success. Right, right. Years and years. You look at somebody like Ryan Fry, who would have learned on the lap of Barry Fry. Right. Infancy, these small set, he's probably tucking by the time he was four years old. Right. Um, he learned all of how to become a champion uh, through all of that, right? Um, so, yeah, there's no overnight successes. And I like the, you know, work, 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 work. It is nonstop work. And you take a day off of work, well, you can bet Bruce Mowat's not taking a day off work. No. And you know who else isn't taking a day off work? Uh, new new mom again, Joanne Courtney and Mike Harris. I don't know where in the world we're going to find him today. Look at this. Uh, right? Thank you. Uh, and, and both of you, it's like we knew what I was going to say next, because, Mike, you're somewhere in a hotel room, I'm sure. A be Joe beautiful Swift Current Saskatchewan. Where, where else would I rather be? Look at that. We've got a Christmas tree. We've got a baby. We've got a show, Devin. We've got a <laughs> Joanne, how are you feeling? Um, I'm not going to bore you with the details. I think I'll just say it's like I'm in the C event of, of, of a bond spiel, like really early. Like you lost your first two games and you're oh. so confident you're going to win. Right. But you're deep. You're deep in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you're going to play at like 9 p.m. and then 9 a.m. the next day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You're locked in that loop. Oh. Right. Look, at, look at Superman back there. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. This is great. This is great. Yeah. How are you guys? Oh. I on the sea event as well after back to back to back bond spiels, but I'm happy to see y'all. Devin's on three continents in three weeks. There you go. Devin was. Yes. Uh, oh, probably. Yes. Well, that's actually a good starting point because let me tell you, um, being with those teams traveling all the way to Japan for an event where uh, for Jennifer Jones case, she played three games, two games, the team was eliminated. So she flew to Japan, lost the first two, and was eliminated from the event and is on the road, and these curlers are traveling. I spent time with Adeen. That team, absolutely exhausted after Europeans. Uniglow was the key sponsor sponsor of Team Adeen, had to be at that event. So, Mike, the grind of these teams is more demanding than ever. And they're here. They're here in Swift Current now. So they they went directly from Kurosawa to, to Swift Current. So uh, and I can just give you I'm, I'm sharing. I can share that I'm coaching the uh, Korean men's team and they are ready to go home. They've been here for three months, essentially. Um, and, you know, they've 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 it's been a grind. They uh, they've had a good pan continental championship um, where they secured their spot at the world. They went home for eight days, which was I don't know, good or bad idea, probably a good idea. And then back here and they've been here for another month so it's it's a lot it's a lot and i was uh chatting with uh team botcher at the airport in uh Kelowna a couple days a few days ago and and uh, i had forgotten as as a, as a broadcaster i going to you know one of one event a month um you forget what the grind is like and it, it's a lot and you, you know spending time uh the, the you know the curling tour is it, there are some glamorous spots like kurosawa but um it doesn't really matter where it is it's a hotel room in a curling rink right for for the most part no matter where you're going so um yeah it, it, it's a lot of work for all these teams and and combine it with practices and, and everything else that ryan alluded to with team return as i can tell you the uh, korean teams are just they work insanely hard and and they they don't close their curling clubs at all in korea they're yeah. 12 months 12 months a year they their their national championship is held in july this is the national team. They they know that they're the national team going to the Pan Continental and then to the to the European or excuse me to the uh, Worlds in April. So, you know they they're they're full on for a full year. So it's 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 a lot. So, right. um, you know full full credit to all the athletes that are out here uh, grinding away. Yeah. The grind the grind is not easy. Yeah. No. You were the most recent on the grind circle of Mike and uh, Devin's always 
Ninth Circuit. Although, <laughs> what is, it, grind wear you down? Is that why you know you stepped back? Um, for me. Oh, sorry, Joanne, go ahead. Yeah, I'll jump in here, Mike. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Um, yes and no. I mean, like the, I would say that the schedule looked pretty similar for a number of years and it was all okay. It's just, I think for every athlete, there's a point where, you know, the, the sacrifice or the grind or whatever, it doesn't merit those high points anymore where like, the pros don't outweigh the cons anymore. And that's kind of where, where it ended up for me. I just wanted to do something else. Um, the, the schedule the way it is especially with how long the season is like if mm -hmm. teams aren't approaching it with you know really clear plans in mind about when the rest is going to come and how they're going to rest and even okay if i have one day off this is what i'm going to do to maximize recovery and everything i mean you end up at the bottom of the tank pretty quick so um yeah. i think it's kind of different for every team and different for every player but like definitely it's it's hard and especially like we're seeing with all these injuries um it's like you said, it's a hyper hyper extended knee. It's a unilateral sport, not all sweepers switch arms and everything. So um, it can be pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly actually what happened to Rasmus um, with all the travel on the plane and then the sweeping when he got to Japan. He woke up the morning uh, of the bronze medal game and couldn't move his neck and shoulders and just couldn't play. Like your body at some point just gives out, right? Yeah. And, and I mean, it's. Yeah, like it, it's hard because you can't just say, oh, we'll just play in four events and really try to do well in these four events because everyone else is playing a ton. And the more you play, in theory, the better you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. You're <laughs> definitely, it's okay. Um, and so it's trying to find that happy medium of what's the right amount to play. I think a lot of teams are playing in Swift Current to kind of like lead into the slam and, and right. get things going, but that's also playing an event directly before a huge major event. So what teams is that good for? What is it? Who is it bad for? And the only way to really learn is to kind of do it and then look back and say, okay, did that work or not? And mm -hmm. then things are always changing. Who's having babies? Who has an injury? Who has other life stuff happening? Who's working full time? Like there's a lot of factors to, to think about. Yeah. Well, certainly it's it's cool to watch both Carrie and Brad with reduced schedules, knowing they were Team Canada, knowing they're going to the Scotties and the Briar. But of course, now we know that the other two teams in both the women's and men's are also going and they're playing real hard, you know. So it's uh, it's interesting to see this weighing of chasing points all the time, risking burnout versus quality practice and more practice and all of that yeah stuff. and it's hard to we had a few years where we definitely were like okay let's take it back a step let's just play you know two events mm -hmm. a month and whatever but if things aren't clicking if things aren't going great that can be hard too because mm -hmm. you just want to get back out there and, and right the ship if you will but if you're not playing a ton that can be a little bit challenging so it's it's finding that yeah. happy medium. it's really tough uh, can we can we talk about attendance at curling events in the country? Because it was interesting in Japan, they did uh, at, at the classic I was at. Uh, one of the sheets in the middle of the venue, they closed off and they allowed fans to purchase premium seats to be right ice level to, to watch the games. Um, Mike, we got to find a way to get people back in the arenas. Um, I think a lot of people are concerned about that. Um, is creating a, a better in-game experience uh, part of that, or do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I think especially at, at Bonsfields that are held in curling clubs, it, it really depends where you go. I mean, um, in Penticton, uh, where we were last week, it was difficult to find... Um, there were there weren't enough people there, I suppose. But you know, here in Swift Current, like last night, there wasn't a seat to be had in in, in the curling rink, right? So um, it really depends on the venue. Saskatchewan uh, traditionally has always filled up filled up the building, whatever size that happens to be. So uh, you know, in in that in that regard, I think that's that's pretty safe. But there are a lot of clubs that are doing different things. You know, my daughter's out in Victoria, and they had a Cashville recently where they they closed off sheet one of their of their building and put a bar out there and tried to change say tried to draw some people in and, and they did a good job actually so um you know you're trying to draw people into to 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 watch events um as far as the major events go you know like i said with our with our grand slam series like nova scotia supported the last event very well i know that saskatoon's basically sold out red deer will be good so really it really just depends where we go and and how you're promoting the event but i think every every club has its own um 
agenda, I suppose. I was talking with Chris Heikert, who's the the GM here in uh, Swift Current, and and yeah. um, they're they're streaming every game. They've got their sponsorship at the club is completely sold out. There, like I said, the they've they've sold a number of weekday passes. You can't you can't actually get a seat at the club on a on a Wednesday evening. So it's kind of cool there. So it just depends on the on the venue, I think. But um, when it comes to the bigger events, um, I don't know if 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 um, what's the word. Are we oversaturated with with curling mm-hmm. events that are on TV? That's 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 the question, I suppose, that uh, needs to be yeah. asked. And yeah, the streaming, and, you can choose to to. I think this past weekend, mm-hmm. this two cells in Ontario, ten tickets. Mm-hmm. There was an event in Alberta. It would. I could have been there for the rest of my life still watching curling. Do I may I say you're doing an admirable job? I don't know how you're keeping your focus, but then you have a perfect baby. Look perfect. It's just amazing. You're not distracted at all. Good for you. What do you think? It's, it's mom ears, right? You can listen to the background and have a conversation and also, yeah, everything at the same time. Yeah. Or do, are you just used to tuning Mike out? <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. What do you think about um, this? Is, do you find there's a saturation point joanne for curling right now that there's a there's just a lot on all the time that's- no i think it's great i'm a big sports fan right now I, I spend a lot of time on the couch and there's a lot of basketball and there's a lot of hockey and there's you mm. know it's a it's a great sport and it, i think if we wanted to look at it you know professionally or even elevate the sport more like it needs to be on and there needs to be curling to watch and i love it and i love that it's throughout the whole olympics it's on every single day like i don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I'd be curious to see what would happen. Like, I think it's the, it's the big venue stuff that you would just love to see it packed. And, and what is the problem there? I mean, is it is it ticket prices? I know that like they vary between like if we're comparing a curling Canada event to a Grand Slam event. Um, the the in arena experience. Like, I think we're always looking at trying to make that more appealing to, to get off the couch and come watch curling. Um, unfortunately, my brain cells, I don't have a lot of them left at the moment, so. <laughs> well, it's just, it's a, it's, a, it's a great game to watch on TV, right? And, and unless you're doing great things to draw people in and giving a unique experience to showing up inside the stadium, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a great product to watch on TV. I will say, like, I think the more that we elevate the sport and the players, the more you end up having your favorites and your favorites may not always necessarily be on TV. So, like, I know when I was, you know, nine and the Briar was in Edmonton and I had my favorites and I wanted to go in and see them in person. And I think that, you know, hopefully with yeah. things like this and the way that the game is is moving, hopefully that continues to happen and maybe that'll be more of a draw, too. Yeah, I did find ticket prices having to pay for the Briar last year to watch my son. I thought, Whoa, that's a lot of money I'm paying. <laughs> Didn't have that media pass call. <laughs> but I wanted to be in the stands. And, yeah. and at the Briar, you're so used to a, a busload of Saskatchewanites. Saskatchewanians? What are- Saskatchewanians. Okay. <laughs> and lately they haven't been coming. So we need a championship team. Of well, we haven't won for a really long time. Exactly. Um, okay, real quickly, Mike, um, uh, you and I had a conversation about the tiebreaker and the last stone draw, and they made the change. Some quick thoughts about that. I'm 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 of the view that you play by the rules of the event, and I wouldn't complain. That's just me. Um, do I would I like to be eliminated by LSD? Probably not. <laughs> so um I'm 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 neither here for or against. I, I'm I'm for playing preparing yourself to play in events like the Worlds or the Olympics where you are, you could be eliminated by LSD. So I I don't know that it's it's uh, who it helps to to introduce tiebreakers into the game other than teams that are bad at the LSD. So that's that's kind of my view on it. I I'm whether there's t- tiebreakers or not, it doesn't change how I would um, approach the bond spiel. I'm still trying to win my three games and get to three and one. And, and if I'm lucky enough to have a good LSD, then I'm in the playoffs. And if I wasn't, then, you know, I, I don't know who is driving the missed, the, you know, the tiebreaker conversation. Um, you know, like I, I think the intention from the get go on the slams is to, 
A, to have the best teams playing the best teams. And the second is to kind of use the rules that are being used internationally. And that, that was kind of the, I think, a lot of the uh, impetus for introducing the rule with no tiebreakers. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the fact that enough teams squawked about it, then they changed. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm glad it is what it is, right? Yeah, I, I'm okay. I'm okay, right? I'm I'm not I'm not a big I'm not a big deal. I don't think it's a big deal either way. Um, interestingly, maybe the teams that are complaining who are in a type or they'll find that 7 a.m. in Saskatoon on a month Saturday morning may not be the place you want to be because <laughs> that's what time the tiebreaker is scheduled for. So uh, we'll Ooh. see how that goes. <laughs> Uh, the, well, the, the, te the television schedule is already set for the for the quarterfinals so the it, to squeeze the draw in that was the that was the time that was available yeah. for the for the tiebreaker so um yeah anyway it's that's that's kind of my view on it i just thought the big difference like with worlds it's a 12 game round robin if you go six and six and you get eliminated on your draw for well you lost six games right yeah. as as fair enough in the world you only play four games like to be right. two and two that's just where that's that's the big difference is how much shorter it is for sure but you get eight thousand but you get eight thousand dollars for your trouble for winning two games right so i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't give that <laughs> anyway there it, there's lots of varying varying opinions i don't i don't think anyone's going to be disappointed that the tiebreakers are being re reintroduced but at the mm -hmm. same time like i said i would you wouldn't have seen me as the one one of the teams that would have been we have to change this damn it because just because mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. anyway just, I know is. we're I know we're going long, but Mike, I have a question. Like, and I, like in the the brain fog and not understanding things, like the slams. Why don't the teams play the the people in their pool? Like, why did they play the other pool? Like, you got well, numbers, number one, two, you'd be, three, you'd, four, and yeah. they got to go play the top. Like, the top seeds play each other. You'd be surprised to know that I don't have much of a say in that. So you'd have to. That, that's a good question. That's a good question for Pierre Charette. I think okay. that would be the next person you bring on here who's involved. I don't. I don't get much say in who plays whom. But I, I kind of concur in that where you'd you'd want to play the teams in your pool as opposed to teams that are in other pools because I think at the last one of the times we had there was no teams from one pool didn't get in. Wow. So yeah, and how they how they do the seating and all that that's uh, that's uh, that's a Pierre question I would say. To be continued. Listen, uh, Mike's here, of course, and you have great memories and a lot of stories from Karazawa. And uh, I took a bunch of video and documented it all. So we're going to play that and then get you to react, Mike, because obviously that, sure. that is a place that means a lot to you. So here it is. What do you say about this young team? They were going up uh, against uh, the Olympic champions, the great Brad Guju at home here. What did you like about them? Yeah, this is the second time playing them this year. I think they're they're really good shooters. Uh, you know, the skip can throw it really hard. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. I wish I could throw it half that hard. But uh, there's so many good curlers here. I like a lot of talent. I think the key for them is to get out on tour, play as much as possible. and. You know, you're going to take your lumps as they get better and, and learn the whole, you know, the, those intricacies of the game, which I think they're they're probably lacking right now compared to a team that's been on tour like ours for 20, 25 years. Um, but certainly the technical ability is as good as anybody in the game. Another title to your name, the first in Japan. Well done, Brad. Thanks. So, of course, Gushu won it there and Team Kitazawa uh, on the women's side uh, winning the final. But, Mike, uh, I got in that old venue. Of course, they've, they've got the new brilliant facility, you guys, on, on one side of the street and across the way is where the Olympic venue was, uh, Mike. So wonderful to be in there and, and see all the Nagano paraphernalia and where you played, of course. Yeah, it was a long time ago. We had uh, we had a lot of great times there with uh, Team Schmerler and and all of the other athletes that were there. And you know, this is back before 9/11, so our you know our hotel was basically protected by a snow fence. We took a we took a bus to the venue with everybody, and it was always always a always a fun event. And and uh, yeah, I mean, I the 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 final of course didn't go the way we wanted, but you know the 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 experience of being at the Olympics and Joanne can attest to this too is kind of a a life-changing one and on so many levels and and um the memories are 
Uh, I don't know if they came flooding back. I said it, it was a long time ago, but uh, when you, you were standing out, the one I noticed was the one you were standing outside the venue with the Olympic rings kind of in the background. That's where they had the, uh, the torch set up when we were there. So that kind of, that kind of triggered a few, uh, a few memories. Uh, when I look at the the building, I, it's, it's shockingly how, how small it is, you know, when we, we yeah, it's, there was only about a thousand people could fit in the venue after playing when we were in Brandon. I think we, you know, it was like seven or 8,000 sold out every game. So going from that to, to uh, the Olympics, it felt the, the, the on ice stuff felt um, diminishes the wrong word, but you knew it was important, but it didn't feel like an Olympics. I thought it should, right? Like, you know, in Vancouver was different, just like a massive crowds and, and all of that. So, and, and I think every, every country has, does, has their own, um, experiences and with it. So um, in Japan, the curling was very new there. There was hardly anyone who really actually curled that much. Um, I do. The one thing I do remember about the crowds is that when we played Team Japan, the closer the rock ended up to the button, the louder the cheer was for the Japanese team. And so, it's, it, but it's wide open. There's nothing in play. They're cheering, roaring. And we'd have an open hit and hit and they were like, oh, and we hit it. Oh, they'd be so upset. <laughs> Just made the open hit. You know, it was it was pretty funny. Um, so we had so we had great experiences there. And uh, there's a few stories that I'd like to share, but we're, we're over time. But, um, you know, a couple involved, involved our team snowboarding, which changed some of the rules for future curlers. And Devin, I've told that story to you before. But uh, anyway, it's uh, maybe maybe for maybe for uh, another time. We'll talk. We'll talk about that. That so. curling show after. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, after hours. That's right. That's right. Awesome. Did you did you line us up an entry for next year? That was the key I thing. I, you were, did. I think I okay. did. Okay, you're on the team. You're I on work, the team. I worked my ass off there trying to make sure. <laughs> trying to make sure Perfect. they invite us all back. Okay. So, I haven't been back since then, so I'd love to go back there and check yeah, it out. I, I definitely said that, Mike. So all right. Perfect. Really cool stuff. But uh, thanks for taking time, as always, Mike. Enjoy my home province. Colleen, Mike, you've spent more time at home than I have in Saskatchewan recently. That's right. Lately. Yeah. So I'm getting back. And Joe, you take care. That sweater, everybody wants to know where the sweater's from. Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, it is from the TSN Skins game 900 years ago. I think it was my first year with Team Holman, and it's, it stood the test of time in my closet. Very Very nice. cool. You can wear it year round too, because it's not Christmas colors. So Hello, perfect. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let you get back to it, Mike. Look at that. There look we go. Look at me. Look, I look the same. There we go. Have an age today. <laughs> Steely eyed, focused as always. Appreciate there you go. You both appreciate you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, guys. Great Bye. to see you both. Bye, All sir. three. Yes. Okay. He hasn't changed. No. You're forming a new team without me. Well, no, you're coming. Okay, I'm coming. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, the four of us. The four oh, of us. The four of us are going. Like a mixed team. Listen, it was really cool, Call. Like I want to go. be there and and you know, I stayed at a hotel which was about a 15 minute walk away. Um and and we're seeing comments about the photo of Sandra. They have a museum actually in the new venue that I took video of and and Sandra's team is in there, the torch, everything. They talk about the, you know, the evolution of curling. So I, I met some of the, the the people who started it all in the mid nineties, ahead of 98 and Kurosawa, Hokkaido, Sapporo. These are like mm. die hard curling communities in yeah. Japan and they are knowledgeable. They care deeply about the game. And I'm telling you that venue they've created five sheets, a warm room, a bakery, within the facility, uh, uh, like it was really first class and it was a perfect size. A couple hundred people could fit in there on one side, a few hundred on the other. It was perfect. It's a perfect model for Canada, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, to make it, as soon as you said the word bakery, I'm like, I want to go. Donuts, donuts <laughs> in the bakery at the curl. <laughs> what would be better, you know? Uh, there were a few Saskatchewan places where the, the cooks made the best food. Yes. And you would literally just, I, I want to go back and play there because of the food. Well, the Granite Curling Club downtown, they made the best wonton soup you could find. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, though, it was nice to see your memories of, uh, and your trip to, and I hope you're not too exhausted. Everybody wants to know, is your phone back? 
Do you have your phones? I know, I know. For those catching up, I was robbed in Santiago. It's been a it's been a challenging three weeks. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm back. I'm wired. I'm I've got both of them uh, back. So I can't imagine. First off, it would be frightening to be robbed, but with I can picture you with both phones using them at the same time. And then they were us, uh, it was a bit of a sitting duck um, to be robbed in oh. Santiago uh, with two phones out like that. I've learned my lessons. I'm exhausted. It's been a great journey. It's been a great show call. Um, good, and we have, good to have you back. I, well, and I, I just love spending time with you. We don't yeah, do this enough. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I'm exhausted. So listen, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the show right where I'm standing. Yesterday we had royalty uh, from the show mm -hmm. "Son of a Critch," uh, mm -hmm. which I, I know is is a huge Mark. hit across the country, but of course in Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, Claire Rankin and and uh, Mark Critch were right here, and they had a little shout out about curling because who doesn't love talking about curling? So that's how we'll uh, end the show call. Take care. Okay. Uh, is there a Canadian athlete that you guys would love to see? Show. Well, you could put Donovan Bailey on there. He'd be great. Tessa Virtue, I know Ooh. she's a friend. She's been in Newfoundland many times. She'd fit That's in. That's good. And Brad Guju <gasps> is, of course, a, a brilliant uh, gold medal winning curler. Oh, curler. Think, yeah. I like that. Yes. Let's they, do that. They can win a medal and you're here at the same time. I love it. Yeah, or different I curling. sweep really well. So. That's right. Mary spends a lot of time well, in the I'm kitchen. Well, I'm taping. So I definitely sweeper. should be. Let's curl. Okay, we'll do okay, curling with Brad curl. Guju. Sold. Mm -hmm. Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Hey, hey.